are going to have a lot of fun because we're devoting our whole show to the fabulous 30s. And to help us with our nostalgic nonsense, we have our very good friends, Steve Lawrence, Carol Lawrence, Alice Ghostly, and Rich Little. <laughs> Together, I do think we should get ready for our salute to the 30s. Yes, I agree with you. A time when things were much simpler. What a time when Gershwin and Porter were writing songs. Mm. And a time when everything was cheap. <laughs> a time when we weren't even born yet. Do you think they bought that? <laughs> Everybody synchronize your watches back 43 years and take it away, Walter Cronkite. Good evening, this is Walter Carter. Tonight, we visit a decade, the 30s. With its symbols and slogans, the heroes and villains, the fears and fads that history texts can never recapture. And everything is as it was, except you are there. 1930, Happy New Year! 1930, some Americans took to the road. They were called hobos and were apparently going nowhere. Some other Americans took to the dance floor. We're called marathon dancers, and they were going nowhere, too. 1930 was also the first real depression year. But there was certainly no depression in the love song business that year. about dollars in 1930, one thin dime was the standard monetary yacht.
the new year, 1931. 1931. The Star Spangled Banner was declared the national anthem by an act of Congress. Bank robbers' names were splashed all over newspapers and became household words. Legs Diamond, John Dillinger. Bonnie and Clyde, Babyface Nelson, and Pretty Boy Floyd. The same year, one of the world's great detectives made his film date. Hmm, very interesting. Very interesting. See what that is? That's a pop pop. <laughs> good. 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 <laughs> this is a very interesting case. All the doors and windows were locked from the inside. Therefore, that means the crime was committed by one of these five suspects. Who was it, Pop? The maid, right? It was the maid, wasn't it? Number one, son, jumping to conclusions again. Confucius say wealthiest doctor is one with most patients. <laughs> now, all the suspects had a motive for murdering our victim. The upstairs maid loved him, but hated him. The chauffeur loved him, but hated him. <laughs> Maybe chauffeur had a license to kill Drove him crazy, but couldn't get started. What? Wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Pop. Also could have been the gardener. Because we found green thumbprint on the victim. <laughs> could have been the cook. But it was cook days off. But he didn't take the day off, did you, Cookie? Huh? That's in your pan. Too <laughs> warm, huh? Mm. Also could have been the butler. But Confucius say that would be too hokey. So, will you get out of the way? Sorry, huh? That's too hokey, too, isn't it? So we have here five suspects nominated. The cook, the butler, the maid, the gardener, and the chauffeur. Collie. Five suspects. Mm -hmm. How are you going to find the murderer, Pop? Very simple. The envelope, please. <laughs> the murderer in New York, the gardener. The gardener. He's gone. He's escaped. What do we do now, Pop? Very simple. Accepting for the gardener in Hollywood. <laughs> In 1931, radio was keeping people home in droves. Major Lars Anson come up here and dedicate the Sky Ride, the Amos and the Sky Ride, and we done come up here with a bottle that I either gonna pop Andy on the head with or hit one of these cars with. Not what I'm looking you in. <laughs> It's holy. Oh, <laughs> well, hi, this is Bing Crosby with a bevy of bouncy ballads. Bucket of beautiful blues and a basket of bub bub boo. So ask yourself, here in my bailer with the bales of banner that boggle the brain. Let's begin with Crosby's Burbank Bash. It's a bobble of biggies from 1931. Someone waits for. Ha, 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 Started on radio. Happy New Year! I'm the fellow who said there were no pretty girls in the government service in Washington. Well, you're the best retraction I'll ever make. It's another one of my famous bonus. 1932, the country was still in the depths of a depression, but radio kept rolling along with Walter Winchell and his good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America, and all the ships at sea. And now here's a flash from Tin Pan Alley. Never thought I'd fall I like I'm getting sentimental over you
musical hits on Broadway in 1932 included Face the Music, Hot Cha, Music in the Air, Gay Divorcee, and Showboat. And while Americans looked for work, they were humming this song. Edie was a lady. Edie was a lady. Though her past was shady. Though her past was shady. Edie had class. With a capital K. She was a lady. Edie was a lady. Though her life was merry. Though her life was merry. She had savoir fairy. She had savoir fairy. Edie did things. In a ladylike way. She A golden toothpick handy After meals She'd flash it about Remember how she used to sip her brandy With her fingers sticking well out Edie was a lady Edie was a lady Ask the I O greedy Edie had class With a capital K The World's Fair was in Chicago, and America got a new deal with the inauguration of FBI. What's our campaign slogan, sister? Happy days are here again. Betty Boop became a movie star. Well, how about that bouncing Betty Boop, huh? Welcome back to Bing's Bacchanalian Boondocks. Right now is the gaudy babe with the big beam and the broad ballast bellowed under the boardwalk. We're having a heat wave. We're having a heat wave. A tropical heat wave. The temperature's rising. It isn't surprising. She certainly can, can, can. She started the heat wave. And in such a way that the customers say that she certainly can, can, can. Happy New Year! Oh, oh, I'm paying for Mr. Duck! Donald Duck was born in 1934 through the pen of Walt Disney and through the pen of Harold Gray, the biggest star in the funny papers was Little Orphan Annie. <laughs> Why, I cheek the rosy glow 
because people listen to the radio or went to the talkies. Talkies like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. At last, after all these years, I have it. A potion. Nay, an Alexa, which will make me the most exciting personality in the world today. Here's to destiny. You know, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm really not too pleased at the result. Are you enjoying this? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, before I bring out Igor here, I want to do a little, little dance step for you. I'd like to take another sip right here in my lap, 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 and my flat. <laughs> Ah, uh, this, ah, uh, this, of course, is, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is, this is, this is all true. I, 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 I never lie to you, audience. May, may I, may I call you audience? Thank you. I love you. you know, I'm right up to par today. I really am. You know, I, I love lions, not, not liars. And, you know, I am Mr. Hyde. I kid you not, until, you know, ABC gets me out of the hiding. You know. What have I become now? <laughs> 1934 brought a rush of would-be stars to Southern California. As I look at you, a thought goes through my mind. What a marvelous find you'd make upon. What makes you say that, sweetheart? I am proud that I have you right by my side. But I'd be satisfied to lend you to the public to be seen. Frankly, girls, I don't give a damn. You ought to be in pictures. W.C. Fields was getting laughs both on and off the silver screen. We'd like to know to what you attribute your great strength and trim figure. <laughs> That's rather embarrassing, but of course, uh, I'm a great votary of the outdoors. And of course, the flying trapeze.
It was a great year for music on the radio, because in that year, your hit parade started the top ten. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Von Zell welcoming you to your hit parade, number seven. began publication, Roosevelt defeated Landon, Edward VIII abdicated, the jitterbug and the big bands were the rage, and everybody was stomping at the Savoy to the music of Benny Goodman.
greatest invention of the 30s. The nylon stocking, not rayon, not all on, but 100% nylon. Fantastic, doctor. Women's legs will look gorgeous in this. But they would pay a fortune for that. Yes. Yes. To think, we hold the patent on this. One size will fit everyone. Why, we'll make a fortune with it. Fortune, doctor. We could make a fortune. Yes, I could see it now. I'm going to believe. I'm Why going to make a fortune. I'm a little fool. You'll never get away with this. You have a run in your mouth. <laughs> You must be pulling my leg. <laughs> <laughs> Could I, could I please talk to you for a minute? Betsy, will you stop bothering me? I'm trying to compose a song here for my great new show, Andy Hardy's Follies in 1937. <laughs> Quiet, huh? Let's see how this thing's got to go here. I like Kansas City in April. Why I like New York. I like New York? I like New York in April. June. New York in June? I like New York and then I have to change the note. June. How about that? How about you? How about you? I wish you'd stop bothering me, though. I gotta write a song. Here. I'm sorry. Women. It seems we stood and talked like this before. We looked at each other in the same way then. But I don't remember where. The clothes you wore 
the smile you were smiling, you were smiling then. But I can't remember where or when. Some things that happen for the first time seem to be happening again. This is Orson Welles. We interrupt this program to announce that the Martians have landed in New York City. So far, they seem to be getting along very well, even though they only know three words in English. Stick them up. Bingo was the race. A carnival of swing was held at Randall's Island, New York, featuring 25 big bands and 25,000 jitterbugs. Also that year, the Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America was founded. Down by the old mill street convalescing from the depression and 1939 was a good year for classics gone with the wind the wizard of oz goodbye mr chips were on the screen and in the world of literature mr john steinbeck won the pulitzer prize for the grapes of wrath and his moving words would soon be on the screen with henry fonda as the young migrant worker tom joe after years of depression times, Tom has become a fugitive, fighting the injustice that wraps the land. In his final farewell to his mother, she expresses her fear. How am I going to know about you, Tom? They might kill you and I wouldn't know. How will I know? Well, Ma, maybe a fellow ain't got a soul of his own, but only a piece of a big one. And then, well, then it doesn't matter. Then I'll be all around in the dark, wherever you look. Wherever there's a fight so hungry people can eat, I'll be there. Wherever there's a cop beating up in a guy, I'll be there. Why, I'll be in the way guys yell when they're mad. 
I'll be in the way kids laugh when they're hungry and know their supper's ready. When our folks have eaten the food that they raised and lived in the houses that they built, I'll be there. came to an end in America, and a new decade was about to begin, the shadow of a war that was to change the world appeared. It began for England in September of 1939, and while Mr. Churchill was offering nothing but blood, sweat, and tears, even then there was music to lift our hearts. December 31st, 1939. This is Walter Cronkite speaking for the 30s. Jane, really? What's the problem? Well, I enjoy doing all those things from the 30s, but there are so many wonderful songs we didn't get a chance to sing. You know, you're right. Those 10 years probably produced more great songs than any other decade in this. Oh, yes. Well, we're sitting here talking about it. We've got a little time left. Why don't we sing as many as we can before the show ends? Good. I, what do you think? Hmm? No, I wasn't listening. I'm sorry. <laughs> Are the stars oh. out tonight? I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. Because I only have a Yes, 
necessarily so. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I think it so. It ain't necessarily so. It's not. It ain't necessarily so. What about this? The very thought of you. the whole truth. That's on General Hospital, Monday afternoon. The Tony Awards, honoring Broadway's greatest performers, will be presented by Rex Harrison, Celeste Holmes, Sandy Duncan, Jerry Orbach, and a host of stars in a two-hour special. Sunday night, March 25th, here on ABC.